As well as allowing computers to store, process and transmit numbers, binary has some interesting properties for programmers. So imagine we had a list of subjects here and uh, we wanted to transmit, say, which subjects we'd had homework for on a given night uh, to a friend of ours using the smallest amount of data possible. If I number them using the binary column headings, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc., with the number doubling each time, it gives us an interesting property. What we can do is we can use an individual number to represent a single subject, but we can represent combinations of things by adding together the numbers. So, for example, if I wanted to represent English and Maths, I could add the 1 and the 2 together to give a total of 3. And what I've done at the bottom of the page is I've added some code to de decipher those numbers, decode them, and split them up into the individual subjects again. So 3 can only represent English and Maths. If I'd used a sequential numbering system, so if I'd numbered them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., um, we wouldn't be able to do that because in that case 3 would represent science but it would also represent a total of English and maths. So the uh, numbering system I've used here um, creates something called binary flags and it allows us to do something useful. We can transmit combinations of values or combinations of messages between things like programs, functions or web pages by sending a single value and that's very useful. So I can send a single value, in fact that represents up to all of these um, subjects. So if I send 255 for example, that represents all of the um, subjects at once. So that's one use of binary, in thing called binary flags. Uh, when I was at school in the 1980s, uh, computers also allowed you to create your own fonts and it used binary to do that as well. So uh, what it did was use the binary number to represent not zeros and ones, but where pixels were uh, lit and where they weren't. So for example, if uh, a one would represent a pixel uh, in the end column, a 2 would represent a pixel in the next column over, etc. So if you wanted to design a character, um, you'd need to think about which pixels you'd want uh, to be lit on each row. So if you wanted something like a capital A, on the top row um, you might have, uh, not a 6, but a 16 to, to uh, light up the middle pixel, and then obviously we would um, sp that would spread out. So on the next row we might have uh, a 32 and an 8, which is 40 and might have the same thing on the next row, so 40, uh, and then we might get it to spread out again, so 64 and 4 would give us 68, and then on the next row down, we'd probably want those same two, but with the middle ones uh, filled in as well, so that's 64, 32, 16, 8, and 4, which I think is 124, yes, and um, then on the next row down, probably you want just the 68 again, and uh, 68 again and I suppose what you could do if you wanted some serifs or a little flick at the bottom we could have uh, 130 on the bottom to make it flare out if you wanted to and uh, that might look a little bit odd so we just go back for the, uh, the 68 so what we would do is we would tell the computer that we wanted that shape for the character by just giving it the numbers 16, 40, 40, 68, 124, 68, 68 and 68 so eight numbers um, representing uh, a character in a font but created using binary.